B-A-M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C Everything you need to know about the Vigo Dem Party So sit back, relax, and watch from anywhere Get ready for a chat with the chair I'm Joe Etling, chair of the Vigo County Democratic Central Committee and welcome to the award-winning Chat with the Chair Delighted you could join us. Happy fall, y'all. I mean, can you believe it? Where did the summer go? Uh, we had some warm weather, but this past week, boy, has the temperatures come down and a beautiful weather that it's been, and hopefully you're all enjoying it, being safe. And, of course, we have got an election coming up, and we've had the pleasure of having some great guests who are awesome candidates and some awesome office holders as well. And today and tonight is no exception. We have got an awesome <laughs> guest tonight. Awesome, awesome, off, oh, off, awesome, this is going to be tough, <laughs> office holder as well as a candidate. Remind our viewers who you are. Sure. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, I am State Representative Tanya Path. District 43, which is Terre Haute, West Terre Haute, and Sealyville. Now, we got your signs all over the community. Yes. And it's on your shirt. Yes. So just so we're clear. In case you're I think confused. everybody knows you, but P-F-A-F. -F, so F. F. P-F-A-F-F. -F -F. Right. So the appropriate pronunciation <laughs> is? Path. Path. So the first F is silent. So there you have it. So is there any confusion about your name? Because your name previously, your maiden name was was of course very well known. And <laughs> so my main name for those that you don't know is Nation. So I was Tanya Nation, which is a really good political name. Uh, and then I decided to get married and change my name. So uh, now my name has been mispronounced more times than I would ever care to count. I just thought we'd bring that up because we want our viewers to be extremely educated. Yes. And you as an educator, I see that. So. Uh, if, if we come up with anything, the, I mean, actually, PATH is a good name once you know how to pronounce it, right? right? Yeah, sure. So, laugh with PATH. There you laugh, go. There we go. There you I go. mean, I like it. Yeah, there you go. Have it's not that hard. With, it is not that hard, <laughs> as opposed to campaigning and teaching right. and all these things that you're doing, right? Sure. Yep. So uh, let's talk to us about what's going on in the Tanya PATH world right now. Well, so in the Tanya PATH world, I have two jobs. So um, I, am a, I am the only, the only... Uh, teacher, legislator. So out of 150 right? people, I'm the only working teacher. Wow, now, that, this is breaking news on the chat. <laughs> we have um, some retired teachers, but I am the only one that actually still teaches. That's awesome. And if you think over half of our budget in the state of Indiana goes to education, you would assume there would be more teachers giving input into all the laws that we pass. But um, So I teach from uh, until December, Christmas break. And then after Christmas break, if we have session, there's a full-time sub that comes in, does my work. I do not get paid to teach, so I leave. So someone else teaches my class. I go to session. I come back. At the end of session, I sleep for a couple days. And then I go back to about 120 new students for either uh, a month or nine weeks. Depends on when it's session. So... And just so our viewers know, what is your subject that you're teaching? Oh, I just assume everyone knows and loves math. I teach geometry and algebra. Is that so, right? Yeah, and everyone just can't wait to come into class. Say, please teach me some algebra. So you're in teaching mode right now, I take it? Yes, I it. am. Yep. Is it old math still, or is there anything new that we need to know for our viewers? <laughs> I mean, we're always wanting to know. We're on the cutting edge here. Um, it is probably the same math that you learned. Is that right? Well, it's geometry and algebra. So, you know, the elementary school, they changed everything. So I'm thinking back to some of the great math uh, teachers this in the Real County School. You know, yes. we had uh, Fife and, and uh, uh, Schuster. And, oh, and, yeah. I had uh, Schuster. Yeah, we had all kinds of great ones. Yep. And, and uh, so who was your mentor, would you say? Uh, my Aunt Rose Bolin, actually. There's another great one. Yep, yep. She would be my mentor and it's funny because um, this is my 30th year so oh. I'm gonna be one of those people that people that say right? oh my god you had Mrs. Paff yeah if they can pronounce your name I well, mean exactly if they, as long as they said <laughs> you know when we were in geometry we were laughing with Paff I there mean, you go I mean you think they say that a lot or not sure I was uh, I was out in West Terre Haute today at the Wabashiki uh, oh, nice. thing and uh, a former student came up to me and she was so excited and she's like Mrs. Path she knows how to say my That's name nice. and and now her daughter is in high school and so I'm so old I'm starting to teach uh, 
kids' kids, and so it, it's, a, oh. it's a brand new day. Mr. Feast, right? Is there's another? I don't know who Mr. Okay. Feast was. So we've I got, had Schuster. Okay, so we so uh, we now know that uh, all of the students running around will be talking about Miss Path um, <laughs> when they come on to chat for that next generation. So speaking of the Wabashiki, yes. what, how did that go today? You know, it's great. I. You know, if you haven't been on that boardwalk, I'm sure you have. Oh, absolutely. I've ridden my bike. I've, I've walked it. It is used. It is one of the best projects that, uh, and best connectors, obviously, for West Terre Haute. I used to um, teach at West Terre Haute for 15 years, so I drove across that grade. And, you know, the, the danger and watching people try to navigate, get, you know, a, across. I mean, that's just a fantastic project. And there were, Riverscape was out there and uh, just a lot of things going on. And, and West Terre Haute is, is building and they're doing well. Terre Haute is, is, is doing well. We're getting so many good projects. I mean, there is enthusiasm around here. That's great. And if you haven't uh, used that connector, I encourage you to do mm -hmm. it. In fact, if you, know, you could, I don't know what your recommendation is, but I know that uh, we've taken a stroll from Fairbanks Park right. and worked our way, and right. it's very convenient. And, and it's it, also lit up at night. Yes. So you'll see many people utilizing it at night, but it, it's uh, if you've not gotten out there, mm -hmm. we encourage you to do it, and and uh, maybe we can get uh, we can have a laugh with Path and <laughs> go on a connector walk. Sure. Maybe that's a project. So yeah. so so let us know, and of course we do appreciate everybody sharing us, liking us, and being social with us on your social media sites. So we want to get the word out. So with uh, your work, of course, in education. Mm -hmm. um, Needless to say, there's a lot of challenges for teachers, and, and right. over the course of 30 years, education has sure changed. What would you say has been the most significant change that you've seen over those 30 years? Well, there, there's two. So there's the students and the teachers. So I'll do students first. So the most significant change is, you know, with students and technology now, and, you know, it seems like at the high school level, everyone has a phone. It's very distracting. So I think... A student's attention span is a little shorter than it used to be, right? Um, so that's that's a challenge. I mean, you can use technology for the good, right? Sure. So we do use it for the good, but it's also just a, a student's attention span is a lot different um, than it used to be. And as far as teachers, you know, we have a teacher shortage. We have uh, there's teacher shortage nationally in Indiana. At the in August when we started, there were over three thousand teaching positions in Indiana. And when I say teaching, I also mean, you know, bus drivers, cafeteria, because it takes a village, uh, unfilled. So a lot of teachers are not telling their own children to go into education anymore, which I, I you know, that's been a huge shift um, in, in my lifetime. Because, I mean, I'm proud to be a teacher. I, I think it's a great profession. And I encourage people to come into this profession, but it, it's just hard. You know, it's not all about money, but when... When you go to college, you get a four-year degree, and you know $40,000, that's what you're going to make. That's pretty decent, right? Well, five years later, you're probably going to make 45000 whereas if, if you go in another profession, um, it jumps up pretty, pretty high pretty quickly. And so just the fact that we don't really pay teachers very much. I mean, most teachers I know have to have two jobs sure. to, to do the one they love, and, and so that's what's changed. And that's really hard because our, our kids deserve the best education possible. And, you know, if, 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 if we don't have good people coming in, it's really hard to teach well. And to your point, there, there's been the lack of regard for the experience and the, mm -hmm. what that brings to education and into a community. And that's, I think, what you're speaking to right. is in addition to um, even the initial pay, but as it's progressing that right. we don't give that recognition because... The people that we're talking about, and yourself included, those years of service, you just don't see that anymore. In fact, you see oftentimes that, um, unfortunately, the people who maybe even start off with an education in college are being redirected right. for one reason or another. <laughs> so sure. um, is there any effort that you can see that might be helpful to encourage people to get into teaching that, that maybe existed before that maybe could be reasserted to help that? You know, we, we talk about this uh, on the state level as well, maybe incentivize, you know, provide housing. Um, but, but really, it just kind of needs to be a, a shift in thought. You know, I mean, my family growing up, we're all public servants, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's just 
I'm, I'm not sure a lot of families are that way anymore. And I don't know how I got so lucky to be one, but all of us are. And I think that's part of the shift, you know, that, that needs to happen is more people need to say, you know what, I could go teach for five years. Even five years would be great. Right. Um, you know, you don't, I'm pretty old school. I've been in the same job 30 years. You know, that, that doesn't happen much anymore. How right. long have you been a lawyer? Uh, about You've had 35 like, years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, but people come in and out of professions now, sure. right? So even if you came in for, come teach for five years, you know, I mean, we need you, so. That's a good thought. So, of course, so we've, we've been uh, delighted to have you on chat with us before about your decision to, oh, yeah. to, to seek public office and then to be a state representative and some of the things that inspired you to do that. Um, so with regard to that, of course, um, you have decided to seek reelection. Right. So you must like what you're doing. You know, I, I, I do. Um, it is very, it, it's fascinating to, to learn how the state of Indiana works. You know, all the different departments and the different services we provide people. And then to go and to listen to these bills, right? Because uh, one thing that I don't think people understand is when we file our bills, wow, by the time it starts to the end, it, it goes all over the place. I mean, you know, I've had so many calls at the very beginning when people are so excited and they're like, oh, this would be a great bill. And then by the time it's passed, it doesn't look anything like it, right? So I really enjoy the process. You know, some people don't want to see what, how the sausage is being made, right. but um, I find it fascinating. And, you know, although I am a Democrat in a super minority, um, I still get things done. I'm not very good about self-promoting and telling everyone what I do, but um, a lot of conversations and amendments and, and tweaking bills, and um, it's, it's really very interesting. I feel so much more comfortable now after four years. The, the first year I walked in, whew, that, that was a lot. Um, but, you know, any job you have to learn the process, sure. right? And so now... I have decided to run for re-election. I don't, I don't think it was ever any like, no, I'm not going to run. So, um, but I, I now feel like I'm at the point where I know people and, and I know how to make things work. So I, I'm really hoping I get re-elected. Well, we do too. And of course, we're all about self-promotion here on the chat. <laughs> so we're going to self-promote you all we can. Well, thank you. So we want to talk though, uh, and I know that you have been so involved with so many different pieces of legislation. Looking back over the last four years, was there a single piece of legislation that you've been involved with that you would want to talk about that you maybe have the most pride in? You know, I actually got a bill passed. It was kind of amazing, um, which doesn't happen very often. It sounds strange, but we have, um, like this last session, I think we had 120 bills, and only five of them were Democrat, co you know, authored bills. So it doesn't happen that often. Um, about 10 years ago, the state of Indiana required that all kids have to pass ISTEP, math and English, to graduate from high school. And because of that, we had lots of kids that simply they went four years, they got grades, and they just couldn't pass that test. And as a result, they didn't get a diploma. So um, I was responsible for a bill. I work with the ARC of Indiana. That now we are finding these people. So it's about 10 years of people just not being able to get a diploma. Um, there's a system in place where we find them and then we offer them um, either to come back and do some continuing education so they can get the diploma or some uh, workforce skill training programs. Because as you know, like for the military, if you want to go in the military, you have to have a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. And so um, my bill was two years ago and we're in the process now of finding these people and, and giving them opportunities. So that I think that's great. Absolutely. I, I think mean, that's great too. And I, I think as a state, we failed them in the first place. Right. So it's the least we can do is to help them come back and, and you know, work if they wish. At least get a high school diploma. And, of course, as you mentioned, uh, your uh, career as an educator first and foremost, and that's, as it's turned out to be, a unique quality, um, which wasn't always that way by any means. But I know that you have been a uh, real voice for public education, mm -hmm. and that's known throughout the state, uh, whether among the Republicans or Democrats, that you're uh, one of the biggest proponents for public education. 
Um, how has that been, what's been the reception from both sides with regard to your stance on public education? You know, I, I think overall it's, it's gone very well. Um, you know, public schools, you know, you have a, a choice to do however you want to, you know, educate your child. But for public schools, we accept everyone and we educate 90% of the Hoosiers. So 90% is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so my attitude is if, if, if we're going to bear, you know, all these kids that we're, that we're educating, we should have the funding, you know. And so that's not to knock charters or vouchers or homeschool or anything like that. I just I want the best that we can possibly do because education is a great equalizer, right? Absolutely. You, I mean, you can come from, from any background and you get a good education, you can do whatever you want. And so that's why I'm always fighting for it is because, you know, I want people to be their best versions of themselves. And there's no question she's a math teacher because she's now figured out that 90% is a lot. I mean, I mean, you, there you go. I mean, it no took question. me a long time. I mean, there's no yeah. question that she's got that math <laughs> background. You can tell that. Mm -hmm. Now, you're also a dynamic speaker and we, you know, quite the cheerleader with the, with the events because we had a huge event down at the Operating Engineers Hall and mm -hmm. you were the keynote speaker for that, <laughs> right? I mean, and in we my had, own mind. And, and no, with, with regard to, we had a great uh, event and, of course, that was a historic ticket that's that's on yeah. the on the ballot, and let's talk about that and the fact that um, we've we've got an all female mm -hmm. ticket at the state level, and uh, I know that all those candidates think very highly of you, and we're so excited that you were there to introduce. So talk about that and and the role that women have made uh, in the, in their politics and with uh, elected office. So, you know, I throw out math numbers. But um, I believe only about 24%, again, of the 150 are women. So we don't have a lot of women uh, representing us statewide. So that ticket that came um, was, help me, Destiny, Jessica, and Zavada? No? Is that how you say her name? We'll say yes. yes. Okay. So, so those three women are running for key positions in Indiana that no one talks about you know, auditor, treasurer, and secretary of state. These are key positions that run the state. And, you know, it's not like governor or something, but they're so important. And to have three women step up and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to run. Because running as a woman, not, not to be sexist, if, if you're running as a woman, there's, it's different challenges than running as a man. Throw on top of that, I believe all of them have children as well. Mm -hmm. So you're running around trying to be a mother you know, a candidate, they all work full time. It's, it's just a lot going on. So I'm really proud of those three. I, I really hope they get elected. Well, they're superstar candidates without a oh. doubt. I mean, they are superstars. And if you haven't had an opportunity to meet them or hear what they have to say, you need to get out or get on their yeah. websites because they are superstars and would do such an awesome job with yeah. the state of Indiana if they can be elected. So we're going to keep uh, working on them. And of course, that goes hand in hand with the need for people to be registered to vote. Yes. And then once they've done that, to actually vote. Let's talk about that. So you have until October 11th. I believe it's the 12th, but I like to tell people the 11th, you know, just yeah. because. And literally, it takes less than five minutes to register to vote. You just go online. You, I'm sure you're scrolling that. We are you know, scrolling that right scrolling now that as we right say now. we need to do that. So this um, is important. Listen her. She's a teacher, <laughs> math, and she knows 90% is a big number. Yeah. So. so I mean, it takes five minutes and you can check your registration also. And so you register. But in Vigo County and statewide, we have low numbers at the turnout. And so you have all these people that are really excited about running for office and, and getting elected. We need people to come out and say, yes, we want you. We need people to vote. And I'm not sure why people don't show up. So again, my family, the nation family, I have voted, I believe, in every election since 18. And even I lived overseas in Japan for a year, in Germany for two years, and I voted then. And it's just such an important thing to teach your children. All my children are registered to vote. They all know, I don't care if you're not in Terre Haute, you're, you're voting, and, and they do. Because, again, I'm a representative. So my goal is to represent the people, not just 20% of the people. So. It's very important to vote. If it, make a plan. If you need a ride, 
call Joe Etling yes, call and he'll me. get you right. Yeah, and I think of all the things, and, and you've, you've touched on some great topics here, and we're going to continue to, but of all the things that we're talking about today, register to vote mm -hmm. and uh, take uh, State Representative Paff's advice there and take, if you're not registered and you, or if you know someone, we ask you to reach out and encourage them to register to vote. It's so important that you participate in the process and be available to do that, number one. And then secondly, that we get you to vote. And as you indicate, I know that I haven't missed an election since I've been yeah. eligible to vote. And it was something that was discussed around the kitchen table at that's our home. It's important. And that's why we encourage you that if you have children or grandchildren, that you encourage them and express to them the importance of that. And that's probably where it starts because... Unfortunately, we have to have a lot of conversations about yes. the apathy of people with voting, and, right. and I'm sure if either one of us had the answer, uh, <laughs> we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. Yeah, We'd probably. be on some island in Tahiti, but, but because we are still here, um, I, I guess, do you have any other suggestions for our viewers to pass on to get people to vote? Well, you know, it's never been easier. So it's Monday through Friday, and now three or four Saturdays, I'm not sure, depends on the clerk's office. Um, and so we have vote centers. So in the old time, in the old day, you know, I'd walk over to Collett Park Pavilion yeah. and there were two precincts in it. <laughs> so you had to pick which side. They're like, oh, wrong side. Anyway, and you would vote there. But now with vote centers, you can go anywhere. Right. And your ballot is pulled up. I'm not sure people understand the process, but, you know, you show your ID. Your ballot is pulled up for where you live and the candidates that you can vote for. Um, you know, now I teach high school. So... 18 year olds can vote right so i'll have students come up and they're like i tried to vote for you i'm like what happened so i registered i showed up you weren't on my ballot you're not in my district well, what do you mean you didn't tell me that <laughs> you didn't ask um, but you know there are districts so my point of saying that is wherever you live your ballot who you vote for is pulled up and I, i'm not sure people always understand that because that's great that's a great point to make yeah they're not they're not sure but vote centers have changed everything and of course also and i know that different times when you were away for employment or education that you were voting absentee but otherwise mm -hmm. i think historically you were a voter as well just like your family you voted yeah. on election day and i still do I oh, you still do i still don't early vote okay. there's something about voting on election day i just you know it, it's exciting to me well, that's great, and as a candidate, we like <laughs> However, that. However, we <laughs> really want people to early vote. So, early voting is very important. So I have, <laughs> then I can say on my end, because I was in your boat and did mm -hmm. that, but, but because I promoted the people to do it so much, I want to be a good example. Not that you're not. I understand. But I, understand. But I think it's so important that we get people, because of things that come up, sure. and, and we have a lot of viewers that, that have a variety of things, and of course, right. particularly in the fall, when we have weather concerns mm -hmm. that we want to take advantage of days like we're having today and, and, and take advantage of that opportunity to get out and vote early when that becomes available. So, so uh, although State Representative Paff, as a representative, <laughs> is still encouraging uh, Election Day voting, we also want to remind you about that opportunity to vote early. And again, that's such a great opportunity. And I also always encourage people, if you do vote early, Put the sticker on, take a selfie, and, and, yes. and put it on your social media because that reminds people, oh, I can vote early. You know, it just, I think, uh, I think the people that pay attention to elections the most are the politicians and the media. And I think, you know, we all have so many things going on that we forget. And so the more that we can promote each other, you know, yep. I'm sure when you vote, you'll Absolutely. put your sticker on and, and throw a selfie up and... And uh, I mean, I always enjoy a good selfie, but anyway, yes. um, I just think it's important to keep spreading the word. Please vote, vote early, you know, vote on election day, but vote because it's important. I think that's great. And I think uh, to your point, we need to keep talking about that yes. because that reminds people because it is amazing um, that you'll see people. Oh, I didn't realize it was election day. Right. It's the day after the election. Right. And so I forgot and these types of things. So take advantage of that. And of course, you have been uh, on the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. um, we know that uh, you were on the mend a little bit as right. far as actually out knocking on doors, but right. the story's out in the community that you are knocking <laughs> on doors right it and is left. out. And so, you know, I know you're working hard and uh, talk about how the campaign's going and what our viewers can do to help Tanya Pat. Oh, sure. So, you know, there's so many facets to a campaign. So you have, you have mail pieces, you have walk pieces, you have 
commercials, you have social media, you have walking and knocking on doors, going to events, um, and the big one of always is fundraising. You know, the reason we want to fundraise is because we have to get our message out. Sure. Um, all that stuff I mentioned besides walking doors costs money, right? So I always encourage people to donate. TanyaPath.com. Isn't that a nice name? Absolutely. Very nice. TanyaPath.com. Um, and you can just go. You can donate via Act Blue. You can donate. You can write a check. I mean, you know, our campaigns always need financial sure. assistance. And that's everyone. That's everyone for me. You know, all the way down to to someone running for, uh, you know, I, I've seen signs everywhere. So everyone's got to sign these days. <laughs> so right. everyone needs money. And it's just really nice that people um, are very generous and helpful in that capacity. So with regard to the campaign, what mm -hmm. would you say has been your favorite topic of those that you mentioned in, in a campaign itself? Like my favorite thing to do? Yes. I like to go to events. Okay. That, that's definitely my favorite because, you know, sometimes people don't want to talk to you. So, like, I'll go to a fish fry, and they just want to eat. <laughs> they, I don't, I'm not sure they want me to give them my whole platform there, you know. So when I go to events, a lot of times I hang out in the back, and people just come up and, and tell me their concerns and their issues, and I can figure out, you know, how I can help them. Or sometimes people just want to say, hey, this is what needs done. So... I prefer events the most because the people that come there want to be there. Yeah. So that's probably one of my favorites. Well, I, but I notice at events that you're, you're you're very good at work in the room. Has that always been a trait that you've had? or you I got it from my father. Is that right? Yeah, he's the master. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I just enjoy talking to people. And, you know, Terre Haute's a pretty small community in West Terre Haute. So I often run into people I haven't seen for a while. And that's just, it's it's just always fun. It gives me an excuse to get out there and, and just, you know, talk about people and their kids and what they're doing yeah. now. And so that would definitely be my favorite. Well, that's good. And, of course, um, you know, we were talking that, um, uh, about that state ticket, and we just wanted right. to be, make sure we remind our voters, that, because your, your point was well taken with regard to people in the early vote, that, that oftentimes they wonder, well, if I go vote at um, uh, Union Hall, mm -hmm. even though it's not in my district, will I still be able to get the ballot? And right. so they, they will pull up your specific ballot. And we, we had talked about that state ticket. And um, another thing, that's everybody in this area and everybody in the state can vote for that state ticket. So you know, we have Destiny Wells, Zanae Brooks, and Jessica Zanae. McClellan. My so, apologies, Zanae. So, so Zanae, so we've got those three that are on the state ticket mm -hmm. and that everybody in this community can vote from them. And, of course, the Secretary of State that Destiny Wells is running mm -hmm. for, that, he, that even has more significance right. within a county. You explain that so if our county votes for destiny over her opponent then the democrats go first on the ticket instead of republicans so it de it goes by county it determines who gets listed first on the ticket and you know you always want to be first on the absolutely. ticket. absolutely so that's another reason we encourage our vo voters to vote for that uh, democrat ticket and because of that importance and and of course we want to represent here in Vigo County and and hope that's uh, the motive motivation for everybody in the state then to elect those three great candidates um, so uh, when you're successful in November and you're going into this mm -hmm. next term uh, would you say that you have certain goals or objectives that are on the plate for that next session you know I do I'm so I started this bill um, that didn't get hurt, but uh, I have some bipartisan support, and I'm hopefully, if I get reelected, I'm going to push it through. It's called Project Lifesaver. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But so people dealing with um, kids with Alzheimer's or autism, you, you get a bracelet, you put the bracelet on them, and then if they happen to wander off, then you call the sheriff, and immediately they can hone in and find that, that, that kid right? or a, adult. And it's a great program. We have it in Vigo County. Um, unfortunately, we had a kid who kind of went over the, the county line, and then that county didn't have it. So um, the kid was fine, but I want to make it um, all throughout the state. So it's in some counties now, but there, you know, if we have $6.1 billion in surplus, and this will be just a very small fraction of the money to, to cover the state. And it's such a great bill. 
Um, this that's is your one bill? of my big thing. Yeah, that's a yeah. great bill. So I did it okay. last year, but it, I, I'm going to see success this year. I'm going to be optimistic. That is awesome. You yeah. keep coming up bills like this, you're going to keep keep getting reelected. You realize that? Don't you? <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And uh, and so uh, for our viewers, um, how could they help the campaign? Uh, I know we've talked about. We obviously want uh, them to send in their money, but other ways to help the campaign. I know that you've yard got Yard signs? Yeah. Um, love, you know, my family loves to deliver yard signs. It's kind of funny because, you know, I have, I have four kids. One is in Oklahoma, but the other three, uh, they're driving around today delivering them. So awesome. you could put a yard sign in your yard. You could walk in a parade. We had two parades coming up, one in West Terre Haute and ISU Homecoming. Absolutely. So we got that. Um, also, you know, social media is a great tool so if i post something you like it and share it then it hits your audience and you know that's what we need we just need to constantly encourage people to vote and encourage each other and 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 get us elected now we also talked about self-promoting here so uh -huh. this is also your opportunity we need to self-promote about your children okay so let's we, <laughs> let's talk about the path uh, children i mean a lot to be proud of i there. do have four of them so the uh the oldest is a second lieutenant in the air force and he is a pilot now and yeah you had a big uh, event recently with him did it was great i went to, out to enid oklahoma which uh do you know what famous politician's wife is from enid oklahoma <laughs> i would say the honorable birch by you're very good. Marvella Bai. Nice Marvella job. Marvella Bai. Is Marvella Bai grew up in Eden, Oklahoma, which happens to be Vance Air Force Base. So. Hey, look me over. <laughs> so Griffin my is... My name is Tanya and my last name is Path. So, you... so Griffin is there uh, and graduated from IU and she is uh, working... Um, I don't know how... It, it, it's called the gig economy, right? So she's called a PA, which is a production assistant on shows. So there's a show called Teen Mom that MTV. So she's been working in Indianapolis wow. on that. And so she's into media. And then my daughter Greta works for the Chamber of Commerce at Terre Haute. Um, she graduated from ISU. And then my daughter Kate is 18 and she's a freshman at IU and learning the college the life. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Went down uh, last weekend to my first IU football game. All right. So a lot of people there. <laughs> it was great. It's great. It was a good win for the Hoosiers. It was. They won in overtime. It was yeah, great. So there you go. So, well, that's awesome. So they're doing well. Um, also on that ticket is uh, Tom McDermott is yes. running for U.S. Senate. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, you know Mayor McDermott. And uh, what do you think about his campaign? Well, I hope he wins. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about that, but I hope he wins. And our viewers can definitely <laughs> vote for him as well. Yes. Right? Yes, so, absolutely. So we know that there may be a viewer or two that can't vote for you just because of where they live. Right. So we want to make sure that they remind their friends and family that live in your district. And just so that our viewers know, because they should know your district, mm -hmm. give us a general outline of your district. Okay, so if you go south, Holman is my cutoff. And then west is uh, the state line. And then east, I go all the way out to Sealyville, and north is Park Avenue. So I'm just like... Big district. It's, yes. But it, it's a good district. I, and I that's really number... Like 43. The 43rd yep. state representative. So if you see state representative signs, there are four state representatives that represent Vigo County. So okay. um, I think people get really confused because they're like, well, you know, which one are you? I, I'm the majority of Vigo County, yeah. as in Terre Haute. Yeah, so, so the Terre Haute is, is State Representative Path. Uh, we are so delighted that you could join us. Well, thank you. You get the last word, so any final thoughts for our viewers? Vote. <laughs> thank you. And vote for Tanya. Vote for so, me and so vote for, for all those good Democrats on that ticket. We do appreciate uh, State Representative Path being with us, and I know she's taking time out of her busy campaign and teaching schedule to be here. Uh, we hope everybody is registered, and if you're not, get registered, and we encourage you to vote, vote early, and if you want to wait Election Day, then get with St State Representative Path <laughs> and go be excited with her and vote, but That's whatever right. you do, vote, because one thing she's doing, even though she's waiting Election Day, She's voting every election she can since every she was 18 one. years old. So if you're still doing that, then you can wait till election day. Other than that, <laughs> get out and vote That's early. Fair. So That's fair. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. Great show. Have a great night. We'll see you next time.
So sit back, relax, and watch from anywhere. Get ready for a chat with a chair.